Hello, everyone. It is Monday. It is day, what, four of the 10-day bundle. Mm -hmm. It is also two other special occasions. We have Stacy Cross, who is our McDougal 12-day health specialist, support specialist. specialist. I, it's going to be right in I, front of you. <laughs> Like you'll have that title and then you'll have the title Kathy calls. <laughs> I need a t-shirt so that you just read it right off my t-shirt every time I'm here. <laughs> and I'll still get it wrong. Okay, so I, I guess maybe it's three special things. Stacy's here with us. I still can't read from in well, actually it's only Stacy's title. Stacy's title is the only thing I'm blocked on because I'm like Stacy isn't a title. Stacy is an amazing, awesome individual. The Thank other you. thing <laughs> that's super, super special is guess whose birthday it is. Yay. It's Cheryl's Yay. birthday. Finally here. Yay. I know. Yay. It's birthday it's week. Birthday. It's birthday week. I'm so excited. And so for those of you who may, well, let's, let me do the bundle, just little quick stuff, and then we'll go and we'll, you'll do your introduction. So it's bundle week, and some of you know what that is, and you're like, what the heck is it? The Vegan Health Bundle is over 150 products that are worth over $8,000 of purchase, not during the bundle. I have $200 worth of products, over 200 in here. The bundle's $49, because it sounds real scary when I say 8,000, doesn't it? But don't take a deep breath, it's okay. We're not gonna, I would never, I can't imagine saying, yes, give me $8,000 for anything. Um, but we have all kinds of things and so one of the things um, i want to talk to you about too is ebooks people get nervous about the ebooks that they're ebooks and we and cheryl is going to be doing um, some videos about how to download it to google drive which is free how to put it on a thumb drive it's about 540 megabytes which you may or may not have free on your ipad or phone but if you have it on google drive you can read it wherever you are or if you're like look, I just don't like the screens. I will not do them. Print them out, print these pages out at home, take it to Staples, $5, they spiral bind it and put a little covers on it. So you can take your favorites. Stacy is in this one. She wrote a, an intro, her and Heather McDougall for our Thriving on Starch. And so just know that you can do that. And this is the um, big book of contributor stuff that you can only get here. So it's called Spring Inspiration Cookbook. Look, notice how I just read it. I didn't even try to, to, to remember it. Um, but it's all spring recipes and I have um, two kind of awesome things. I have my nut-free vegan goat cheese made with okara and then I have a strawberry rosemary water. So that I know you're going, there's gotta be sugar in there. No, it, you just get the benefits from that. And don't be like, everybody keeps talking about like how big it is and everything like that. And when she talks about, you know, the size of it, don't be intimidated and think, oh my gosh, that's just so big and I, I can't possibly put that on my computer. 540 megabytes is not that big. No. It is less than a gigabyte. It, it's like half of a gigabyte. So, and most computers today, at minimum, you've probably got 256 gigabytes on your computer. Um, that's pretty much the standard size of a hard drive these days. But and Google Drive is free. And Google Drive gives you 200 gig? Like I have no idea. 100 gig, something like that. It'll but give you enough. You've trust got plenty me. if you get a Google Drive, if you have Dropbox, uh, and we'll, any of those kinds Yeah, of and we'll go through some of those details along the week too, because I know that, you know, that can seem not helpful but it's really not hard and we'll do some videos for you so now that that stuff is gone i put a bundle there's a bundle link in um the stuff below i'm, I'm going to be putting it in the chat some as well as um on our free heartbeat group we have a bundle thread so you can go and show pictures of food that you're making or stacy's going to tell you about dr mcdougall's gut health class and you could be like dude you gotta go check this out so stacy why don't you go ahead and do a little intro and tell us all the things great well that sounds amazing kathy that is i love everything you have included there and 
it's an incredible deal. So go get it, guys. Um, also included in the bundle, I'm Stacy Cross. I am a support specialist for the McDougal program, our 12-day online program. And um, we put into the bundle a gut health, um, what's it called? I, I keep forgetting the name. See, I have to read also, Kathy. I don't memorize these things. You're the just McDougal doing it program to make me feel health. better. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. You're like, let me make Kathy feel a little more comfortable. Uh, no, I was I was getting ready to really mix up all the words, but it's the McDougal program for gut health. And it is a mini course. And the purpose of it is to go through and talk about how what you eat impacts your gut health, your intestines, and how feeding your intestines and your guts the right food makes such a tremendous impact on your health. And whether it be that you're dealing with constipation, chronic diarrhea, in kind of any kind of inflammatory condition affecting your gut health, or just upset tummy, there are tons of suggestions um, given and also explanations and a lot of education around why certain foods can cause distress, intestinal distress, and how to overcome that. Um, we work with patients in the 12-day program all the time who come to us with all kinds of ripped up gut issues. And it's really rewarding and exciting to see the positive impact that the McDougal diet has on their gut health. So just to let you guys all know, this is a mini course right now, but we're actually turning it into a larger course. And um, it's going to be, hold on, I'm getting back to it. Um, it. The full course will be released. It's gonna be based on Dr. McDougall's digestive tune-up book. And when that's released, for any of you who are purchasing the bundle now, that will give you access once our full gut health course is released to to take advantage of that for 50 percent off so just to make sure i'm being clear if you buy the bundle right now that we're talking about um chef aj's bundle that we're all in if you purchase that now then should you decide to take our full course on gut health the digestive tune-up course um you can you can get that for 50 percent off since you purchased this bundle now so just FYI, there's That's that. That's awesome, because there yeah. are some other coupons in the bundle and different things. So you guys make sure to look at it. When you're downloading it, it's gonna look like you're downloading all PDFs, but some of the things that are courses, you have to click on sign up for the course in your PDF. And I'm assuming that that is probably the case with Dr. McDougall's as well. Mm -hmm. And this is a program you said that, it does it already exist the full program or they're working on the, we're working on it right now. So this mini course is the first step. We're releasing the mini course first, and then we'll eventually roll out the full course, hopefully soon. I'll let you guys know if I get a date on that. Cool. That's so awesome though, because that means um, probably the people who are starting with this mini course actually have some impact with their questions and what they have about what might Definitely. be in the larger course. So that's a yeah. really great opportunity for people. Mm hmm. Yeah, we're excited about it. We have, you know, for any of you guys who maybe you're having some digestive issues, maybe you've even received a diagnosis or multiple diagnoses about digestive intestinal issues that you may be having. Um, we really encourage people, especially if they're on any kind of medication for those things. If you're able to do the 12 day program, that's ideal because we can really um, approach your situation medically, you know, you'll meet with Dr. Lim, you know, he'll give suggestions about tapering down on any medications as you begin to experience healing in that way. But if you're someone who just, I, I hear this all the time from people, they go, I, since kindergarten have had an upset stomach, you know, or I have had just unreliable, you know, digestive issues on and off my whole life. And I don't know why, I don't know what's causing it. This is a great opportunity to get a full education on digestive health. Try to kind of wrap your mind around, okay, what kinds of things really could be impacting it? And maybe go ahead and start doing some things, implementing some of these suggestions that we make and see if you're able to sort of turn things around on your own. Oh, that sounds awesome. 
And I'm, I'm call, putting a call out for some questions, too, because you know Please. everybody has 80,000 questions. But we will, of what? course, save time for story time. Do we get to have story time <laughs> today? I do have a story. I have one on deck just in case we have time for it. Um, but I okay. also have a question. Ooh. So that can come in whenever you're ready for it. Ooh, let's ask. I, I'm curious now. Okay. So I get to start with that? Yeah. Yay. Okay. Well, as you all know, because Kathy just shared, it is Cheryl's birthday today. And I love birthdays, specifically other people's birthdays. I don't super love my birthday, but I love celebrating other people's birthdays. And I also really love them as an opportunity to stop, reflect on the year that's just passed and think towards the next year. And I feel terrible that I'm putting you on the spot, Cheryl, but I <laughs> bet there are a lot of people that are just as curious as I am about how you feel when you reflect back on this past year, how has your outlook, um, you know, your feelings about your own health, your own life, your own future, how have those changed? And what would you say is the big, you know, I guess revelation or the progress that's been made over the past year for you? Well, this time last year, I would have never imagined that I would be 40 pounds lighter. Um, now mm -hmm. uh, that was a big I mean I was working on it but I figured maybe 10 pounds for the year or something would have been good uh, never imagined 40 pounds um, I just I, I feel like I've gained some of my my movement ability has been so much greater um, even with some of the setbacks that I've had you know we've talked about um, just from physical issues um, I still like soon as I get the get stuff cleared up, then I'm ready to go again. I don't I don't seem to keep falling back. Every time I have a little like it used to be, if I had a setback, I would just be like, yeah, well I'm done. But now, if I have a, a slight setback, then I'm just like, oh I've got this, right? I know exactly what I need to do now to right the ship. I know exactly how to tighten down to right the ship. I don't panic like I used to um, when things aren't going my way because I know that it's just some personal responsibility has to be taken for me to just dial things back a little bit. You know, I push the end of the envelope and then I see what happens. It's all an experiment and then I go, okay, I gotta slide back this way. You know, just seeing how far I can push things. And, um, and, and everything is like uh, an experiment and data collection for me. And I would have never dreamed a year ago that my mind would be working this way. Like, would you? Like, no. I am completely, no. like, 360. I'm taking better care of myself mm -hmm. for the most part. Much better than I was before. Yeah, you were. You were. <laughs> I still have days where I just care of you before. I so. still have days where I'm like, I really don't want to do that. <laughs> but you know, um, that that's human. It, it's human. You know, sometimes like I've been having trouble sleeping again, and um, rather than just keeping it, making it keep going on, I contacted my sleep doctor and said I'm having trouble sleeping again. And guess what? I got something to help me with that. And a year ago, I would have just been like, I can't sleep. And I wouldn't have done anything about it. So going through the McDougal program has kind of changed my mindset a lot and how I think about things. And uh, I'm not afraid to reach out for help when I need it either, which is something that I, I wasn't very good at before. I would let things go way too long before I would even mention to her I had a problem with something. So. Yeah, there's lots of times Cheryl's gotten in trouble for not going ahead and going to just to see a doctor, like yeah. for something small, like maybe a bump that might have gotten infected or something. Like so, it can be really tiny or, you know, larger, like the sleep, which has yeah. been very hard for you. Yeah, the sleep has been. It, it, and, and the thing is, when your sleep is off, and, and Stacy, I think you'll agree with me on this, when you are not getting sleep when your schedule's not consistent when you're all up in the air and you're doing whatever everything else in your life is impacted by that your ability to exercise making the right yes. choices when you eat just like everything 
is impacted by your sleep. Even my blood sugar numbers are impacted by my sleep, which mm -hmm. I found absolutely amazing that that actually was a thing, but it is a thing. Well, yeah. and, and Stacy, that's one of the first things I've heard you ask us too, like if we're like, eh, you're like, how are things going? You're like, how are you sleeping, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's so important. And the thing is, when you are sleeping, your body is doing the work of repairing all of the damage from the day before. And so if you're not getting enough good quality sleep, then the repair is like halvesies. You know, it may not be a complete repair and rejuvenation for the next day. And then you carry that around. You know, I, um, for many years, I felt like I was sort of, walking around in a fog, you know, like sort of brain fog, like people describe and just a little bit cloudy all the time. And I worried about it all the time. And I thought that I was doing okay on sleep. But now I look back at that time and go, Oh, no, I was not doing okay. I was not getting enough sleep or quality sleep. Now for me, it was because I had toddlers and babies <laughs> and stuff. And so it was yeah. just, you know, it was like disrupted sleep more than anything else. But um, now that I'm much clearer most of the time, if I get a poor night of sleep, I'm immediately back in the fog. And I so it helps me to realize now, oh my goodness, like the fog, a little bit more like emotional, you know, a little bit more like just not a shark, like all of those things were because I was, you know, sleep deprived for a while there. So mm -hmm. sleep makes a tremendous impact on so many aspects of your body. And the other thing, Cheryl, I want to mention that you mentioned that I thought was so incredibly astute <laughs> was that you said sleep even impacts your blood sugar. And you said, I was so surprised by that. But, you know, I think so often we see our systems like they're separate things, but we're in one human body head to toe. So when you really think about it, it shouldn't be that surprising that when we get poor sleep, we feel poorly or our blood sugar is, is impacted or even our blood pressure um, or our skin, you know, that's, and, and now, you know, in science right now, they're making so many connections between gut health and mental health you know, mental wellness and, and gut wellness and how they're related and they impact one another. And everybody's acting like, whoa, this is like just such mind blowing stuff. But really, when you think about it, it's like, why shouldn't your gut affect your brain and your skin and your muscles? You know, it's all we're all one human. So anyway, I'm I am so thrilled about your year and all of the amazing health gains that you've made. And Cheryl, I think one, one thing I observe about you that I love so much, and I think we can all celebrate here on your birthday, is that you are, you are a calming presence and you are steady Eddie. And so, you know, one thing that you do really well that I wish I could like take and sprinkle on all of my people that I interact with all day is that when you do have a misstep or you, you know, give in to a temptation or something like that, you don't panic. You don't wig out. You go, oops. <laughs> All right. Time to course correct. I know exactly what to do. And you just find your way right back to center. And I wish I could t communicate to you how rare that is and how much I think it matters more than almost anything. I tell people all the time, hey, I am so not interested in you being perfect because number one, that's never going to happen. And number two, it's not what matters. What matters is your resiliency, like how quickly you pop back up when you're knocked down. That matters more than anything. And Cheryl, I feel like that you've got it down, like you are unstable stoppable in your resiliency. You just pop right back up and you keep going. And that's what's going to ensure that you make it all the way to your goals. Well, and you know, the thing is, I think and for Kathy too, I, I think you'll agree, like when we quit trying to be perfect with everything mm -hmm. all the time, it takes so much pressure off yourself. You, you just take yes. so much pressure off. 
Well, I feel like all that time you spend worrying, you actually have time to like, I don't know, prep food or take a walk. Mm -hmm. Like that, it's a lot of time. And I mean, I am super neuro. I always say I'm, I'm an extra neurotic little bunny. And Stacy knows <laughs> it's true. <clears throat> but when you can kind of take back some of that time, like we never have time, but we have time to go, I don't want to cut up the onions. <laughs> or maybe, it's, I don't think it's just me, but I'm like, oh. Or you're like, oh, I really want to make this, these beans, but they're dry. You know, it, and it depends on how you feel that day. But taking 10 minutes Well, it minutes was like back, me looking through the bundle stuff the other night, and I kept trying to find something <laughs> that I could make, that I could make online to, like, you know, surprise everybody. And everything that I looked at, I was like, that just, that's so complicated looking. That's just, that looks too hard. No, I can just, I can't. I just, I can't. And then we got online and we made something together. Mm -hmm. And it was really super easy. We made little panini hash browns and we used them as buns for our tofu breakfast sandwich. Ooh, yum. That sounds amazing. So I was like, I was like, let's see if this works, right? <laughs> but it, it, whenever you're starting something new, be it a new diet or even just if you've been whole food plant-based and you're doing no oil, or if you're doing standard American diet and now you're trying to eat vegan, it's 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 a lot to resist, you know, all these changes. I don't know about everybody else. I'm a Taurus. I just want things to be the way they are. And obviously I don't live that life, but, but I fight with that part of my brain. And you do really good, though. I, I'm a little, I can be a little loosey-goosey sometimes, though. But I, well, I eventually, I eventually, I know what I need to do, and I eventually just kind of slowly get back there. Sometimes it's an immediate, sometimes it's a little bit slower. But I get there, and I, I do. I do think that it, it is a trait that I've always had that I just never really like used. Yeah. What well, yeah. thank you, Stacy? Well, yes. Let me say one more thing just about that, Cheryl, and that is, um, you know, that's that would be a great. I'm sure you have other things that you you aspire to right now, and and some of them may be diet related, and some aren't at all. But I think it would be a great thing for you to aspire in this next season of your life to getting back on track immediately. Like you were just saying, you know, sometimes it takes a while, sometimes a little loosey goosey. I think the faster you can do it, like almost make it a competition with yourself. Like how right. quickly can I turn this ship around, right. you know, and just see if you can start shortening the intervals between whoops and back on track. Right. That will serve you so well. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And that's yeah. good for everybody to take too. Yeah. And if you're competitive, I'm I'm self competitive, competitive, but I'm not competitive with like other people. But oh, Shane's. Well, not you really. <laughs> no, but, but no, it's not like it's not like I'm going to trip somebody to run a race or something like that. No. But I'm going to hope that I do my best and I win. Now, if you play a board game, I'm going to cut you. So if I know how to win the board game, I'm winning the board game with no mercy. But also if I go on somebody's show, I'm going to talk about somebody else's cookbook. So I'm not right. I'm not competitive actually in my workspace. She's but, just personally competitive with like her. Oh, and if I put a number or Cheryl. Time, and, yes. She thinks I'm competitive with her, but I'm not. <laughs> she every time I make a goal, she's like, I think that's too hard. I'm like, it's not your goal. <laughs> It doesn't have to be easy for you. <laughs> marriage. I love marriage. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and I think that's with everyone. We have a couple of questions if you're ready to transition. I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay. One, I, a couple of them I know what you're going to say. I suspect. It's like a game show for me. I'm like, what, am I right? Am I not? I should keep score. Annie uh, says, Chef AJ talks about the importance of starting with veggies. What would Dr. McDougall suggest people eat for breakfast? Great question. So um, we actually don't emphasize that at all with the McDougall program. And that's not to say that it doesn't work great for Chef AJ and many other people. I know some people just swear by it and love it. Um, you do not need to start with vegetables. In fact, we don't put um, parameters around you getting any particular vegetables at any particular time throughout the day. Um, so the McDougal diet is a starch centered diet. So starch is a center, right? With the addition of fruits and vegetables for taste and variety. 
So only you get to determine how much taste and variety you want to add to your starches. Now, at times, it is helpful to have non-starchy vegetables and fruit on the scene because they do help dilute the overall calorie density of your meals. But if you're eating water-rich cooked starches anyway, and that would be things like your beans, rice, corn, quinoa, potatoes, barley, cooked oatmeal, those types of things, then your calorie density of your meals is already so low that you don't, for most people, you don't have to make such a huge concentrated effort on getting lots of fruits and vegetables in. And the other thing is that we tend to feel like the more like additional rules there are to follow, the better the opportunity is for you to totally mess up. <laughs> and we like to keep things very, very simple. Now, um, if you have already been eating the McDougal way for a really long time and you just are wanting to get more vegetables in, that's perfectly fine. That's a personal choice and goal and you should go for it. But we as a program, we don't put into place any specific recommendations about how many and how much you need in terms of vegetables. And I, I like that. It's interesting because Cheryl eats more vegetables now than she ever has before. Yeah, it's true. But, um, but it is interesting because we've talked about this before too, about how it can be very difficult um, just kind of listening to everything that's going on because each doctor has its own little way. So again, just to be real clear, we're talking about Dr. McDougall's starch solution. And it's for me, I found it the easiest. There's not like, you don't have to eat 17 things every day or do this or do that. Now, I'm not saying that that means it's the perfect thing for you, but I think it's a really easy way to step into things because there aren't so many rules, exactly like what Stacy said. Um, another question from Bridget, who's just starting the journey, does it matter which rice we eat? Brown rice is preferable because it's a more intact grain, meaning it's less processed. The outer hull of the rice is, is left intact on each grain. However, it is fine to eat white rice. So if I know I have talked to countless people who are like, it's no like it's no deal at all whatsoever. If you tell me I have to eat brown rice, I'm not eating rice and I'm <laughs> I'm very quick to tell them, hey, white rice is okay in a pinch. If you need, if you want to eat rice, but you just can't do brown, white is fine. I love white rice. I also like pretty well brown rice. So I sort of alternate in my home. I will cook like this week, I cooked a entire package of basmati white rice and my husband and I have been getting down on that basmati <laughs> rice. Oh, basmati and oh, jasmine oh. are just so oh. awesome. So, so awesome. Yes. And so it's almost out. Like we have, I think I have a serving for lunch and Stan has a serving for lunch and then it'll be gone. Boo. -hoo. And so just for my own reasons, I'm going to make myself do brown rice for the next week, you know, just to try to, so that I have, you know, so I have both, but no, it doesn't, ultimately it doesn't matter. And just two things that I would mention as like recipe developer, Kathy, is one, when you're trying to get your family to like brown rice, add a little extra water and cook it a little bit longer. It'll be softer and it'll have more of the consistency. And it's not a, it's not a one-to-one. -one. I do that when I switch Cheryl from regular pasta to whole wheat pasta. If you, if you cook it a little bit longer, you, it just kind of disappears, that difference. And for, for me, one of the things I like to do, if this sounds like too much to you guys, just, just don't hear what I'm saying. But there's, there's more to life than white rice or brown rice, too. There's pink rice, which is kind of actually in between. Red rice, which is closer, it's like got um, 75 or 80% of the um, fiber and nutrients that um, brown rice does. It's, it's, it's processed very similarly. And there's purple rice. And sometimes I've heard that and there's this one bowl place that we go to that we talk to all the time. It's the purple rice. I'm like, I'm all about that purple rice. It feels like 
I, I don't know which one they're using, but it feels almost like white rice in your mouth, but you can tell that it has a but lot it, of fiber and hull to it. It has the filling capacity of brown rice. And so, and wow. plus it's pretty. So that's something else that if you if you know that your family's like super against brown rice, then maybe try red rice because they won't know quite what to think. <laughs> shift that narrative a little bit and then because I love Halloween and spooky so much um, we eat black forbidden rice which is actually a harder rice a chewier rice than the others and all of but it's a whole grain as well I've never met a rice I didn't like yeah and, and some of these are more expensive so let me tell you this you don't have to do any of the stuff I've said and if you're looking between white rice and brown rice, don't forget there's brown jasmine and brown basmati. And that may up your family's brown rice game too. Brown basmati is pretty amazing. And we get that at Costco? Yeah, we yeah. we get it sometimes at Costco. Sometimes we'll go to the Indian market or the Chinese market to get our rices because sometimes they're a little less expensive. At H Mart, you can get the purple rice and the red rice. That's the cheapest I found those. Mm -hmm. But... We all know I'm more adventurous when it comes to stuff like that. All right, we've got a sleep question. Um, Melina says, I know sleep is important. I have issues waking at 2 to 3 a.m. Is taking sleep medication okay, or should we do it au natural? I am not a doctor and cannot answer that question, but I can tell you that um, anything that you take that interferes with your sleep, whether it be it brings sleep on or it stops sleep, things like caffeine or um, energy drinks, things like that, that is ultimately not a long-term solution that you want to depend on at all whatsoever. So even in the case where a doctor may recommend that you temporarily take some sleep medication, that should be a short-term solution, as short-term as possible, because these things really mess with our circadian rhythms, and we want ultimately to, to be able to get to the point where our body is back in charge of telling us when to sleep and when to wake, and that the body is totally able to handle that, just like it is your hunger and fullness cues and your thirst drive and all of that stuff. And I would just say, the two things from my experience, also not a doctor remotely, but one was going into perimenopause, I don't know your age, but me and all of my friends that I know for a period of time woke up in the middle of the night. So I would, that may or may not even be a possibility, but if it is, you might wanna to talk to your doctor. What I did is I just got up, started doing stuff for a few hours and just made it so I could sleep later in the day. It would happen for like six months. The other thing is, wherever you are, if you're taking any kind of medications, vitamins, like Stacy was mentioning, caffeine is like a perfect example. Like, I remember the night I realized I can't have iced tea with dinner. Like, it happened <laughs> one night and I was up till four. Um, but like even things like maybe medications or vitamins or things that you've taken in the past as you get older could change. Like. Um, yeah, so there was some medicine that I was taking at night that I wasn't supposed to be able to take at night that never bothered me and then I couldn't sleep. So maybe just have that conversation too with your doctor and try and open that up. Yeah, so like in my case, it's a very menopausal type issue thing that I've got going on too. And what I was trying to do to take care of it myself very wrongly was I would try to stay up until I felt tired. Well, I wasn't ever feeling tired, and by 2 or 3 a.m., I would go, well, I guess I should go to bed, and then I would just lay there again. Um, and, and so uh, now I'm trying some other things to try to make myself more tired faster, and I'm trying to, uh, the main goal for the next 30 days of mine is to get into a definite habit so that my body knows this is the time we eat, this is the time we sleep, this is the time we wake, and so I can get my circadian rhythms going with everything. Brilliant. That is absolutely what we should all be doing. And this is, this is another great 
piece of advice that Cheryl just gave, not just for people who are having sleep issues, but people who are who have lost touch with their hunger and fullness cues is go ahead and institute a meal time, you know, that you aspire to have. Like I hear this all the time. People are like, I don't know when I'm hungry. I don't know when I'm full. OK, that's fine. Scratch that for a little while, go ahead and pick your meal times. Okay. I eat breakfast at eight 30 and I eat lunch at 12 30 and I have a snack at three 30 and then I have dinner at six or whatever. That was just an example based loosely on my own life. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's your but, lifetime movie. <laughs> yes. And sometimes what's helpful about that is if, if, you have a meal time set and you're not just grazing throughout the day and you're not like unsure about when meal time is coming you can begin to observe okay how do i feel right before meal time gets here and ooh, what are the sensations in my body that i'm experiencing just as i'm supposed to be getting hungry again what are the sensations i feel immediately after meal time you know and that's how you can that can really aid you in getting back in touch with those hunger and fullness cues yeah, definitely. Oh, that, definitely. that makes perfect sense. Kathy Richard says, I usually get back on track because when I'm off, I feel like crap. I'm going to use that suggestion. How fast can I get back on track? So I'm glad I'm watching today. Great. I'm glad you're Good, here Kathy. too. Yeah. Um, uh, Annie says, thank you. I'm just starting this journey as well and been losing weight very like capitals, very slowly. I'm trying to stay all in. Can you say, what you eat for breakfast. Can you sure. all say what you eat for breakfast? So would you want to go first? Or you want us to go first? I'll go first. That's fine. Okay. Um, I always have some kind of oatmeal. I just love it. I never get tired of it. This morning I had cherry chocolate oatmeal. I'm getting mm. real fancy. So I had frozen cherries that I topped with oat, like hot, piping hot oatmeal. And I put a little bit of um, cocoa powder in there and mixed it all up. And then as a special treat, I drizzled PB2 that I reconstituted with water or whatever, uh, turned it into like a syrupy type thing and put that over the top of it. And I always do a tablespoon of flaxseed in my oatmeal, but that's what I had this morning. It was so good. Oh, that sounds delightful. Yeah. We have not, we, we slept in because it's birthday day. Yeah. So we haven't <laughs> eaten yet, but we've, but yesterday we made those tofu breakfast sandwiches. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'll just do panini hash browns. We do a lot of oatmeal. We do a lot of oatmeal and we do a lot of grits. Grits. Mm. Love we'll grits. alternate sometimes between the oatmeal and the grits. Um, and then sometimes like, if one or both of us gets up, like I always try to make stuff the night before so it's in the slow cooker in the morning so we can get up and get it as we feel we want it. But there's sometimes that neither one of us really feel hungry right away first thing. And so we'll wait a little bit and sometimes we end up having more like an oatmeal brunch kind yeah. of situation. And it can, just, it can just depend for sure. And just in case anybody's like, well, it's so hard for me to make things in the morning, don't. Make it in your slow cooker the night before. So if you use like a four or five quart slow cooker, you can do one cup of steel cut oats or one cup of grits, about four, four and a half cups of water. You'll figure out, with, it depends on your slow cooker, yeah, if it's, on if low it's fast, overnight. Do more. And with grits, it's going to look like disaster has struck. <laughs> so it's going to be like this clumpy thing and you're really going to have to whisk through it, but then it's going to be perfection. Okay, let's see what we've got next. Um, we talked about black rice, brown rice. JNo99 says, I'm 10 to 15 pounds from my goal weight. My weight loss has come to a stall. If I stay on course, will I, will I eventually lose it or do I need to do something different? A little bit of both, okay? So um, likely you are at a calorie equilibrium, which means you're taking in the same amount of calories that you're burning each day. And as long as you do that, you will stay exactly the same. You may go up, you know, you may, what you may see is the maddening thing where it goes up a pound, down a pound, down a pound, up a pound, forever until you die. <laughs> it's awful. Okay. 
that last 10 to 15 pounds, I always tell people like it's a true test of your mental fortitude because it is rough. It can be rough. Some people just breeze right through it. I don't, you know, can't explain why some people breeze right through. Most people have a hard time. But what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to change your calorie deficit. Okay. You need to be back into a deficit. And the only two ways to do that are to consume fewer calories or burn more calories. But a lot of people go, oh, well, I'll just eat less and work out more. And it's not exactly that straightforward or easy because oftentimes when we increase our activity level, guess what else we also increase? Our hunger drive. Yes. Your body cannot be tricked. Your body knows exactly what's going on. And so if you're burning more calories, your body's going to say, oh, now we need to eat more calories to accommodate for that. So it has to be, these are not massive changes. We're not going to go out tomorrow and start exercising to burn 500 calories and eating 500 calories fewer and you know oh look now i'm at a thousand calorie <laughs> calorie deficit no what you're going to need to do is increase your activity level and be very very careful to really honor your body's hunger and fullness cues what you eat now um is is going to need to be fewer calories than what you ate when you were 30, 40 pounds heavier because you were in a heavier body then. You were naturally burning more calories just going from A to B. Just in your life, normal life things took more energy because you were in a bigger body. Now that you're in a smaller body, you aren't burning as many calories when you walk across a parking lot as you used to. And so the changes in what your body demands calorie wise are quiet. Your body's, um, your body's hunger and fullness cues can scream if you've waited too long on either one, right? But for the most part, we don't want you to wait till your body's screaming. No, not for the most part, all the time. We don't want you to wait till your body's screaming. We want you to hear that still small voice that says, I've had enough or I need some food. Okay. And so you're going to have to be very intentional about listening to your body's hunger and fullness cues. The other strategy that you can do to get off those last 10 to 15 is where you're changing your proportions of starch to non-starchy veggies and fruit. This is where the non-starchy vegetables and fruit come in to help you with weight loss. So let's, let me give you an example. So yesterday I was very, very hungry, very hungry. Um, we got, we had just gotten home from a bunch of sports stuff. We had been outside all day. It's starting to be spring here. So it was like hot. I was in the sun, you know, the whole thing. And so when I got home, I was like, I don't even care about a vegetable or fruit. I'm having all starch. So I had this like split pea soup thing Ooh. and rice. And then I put just a little um, Mrs. Dash. Is it Mrs. Dash? Is that what it's called? I think so. Seasoning. Yeah, it was just a seasoning mix that she did. It's nowhere near as amazing as all the stuff that Kathy makes, but I was in a hurry. I was, it was like an emergency, you know, it was the so The best seasoning hungry. blend is the one you have in front of you. Yeah. yeah, exactly. This is a Southwest, Mrs. Dash's Southwest Chipotle seasoning bin. Ooh, that blend. sounds good. It's, Oh, it's really good and it's salt free, you know, so it's, it's really nice. But anyway, that was a hundred percent starch guys. Almost. I mean, I guess there were a couple of vegetables in the split pea soup that I made, but I made it really thick and it was very like split pea. That's heavy. the way I like mine too. Me too. Yeah. So, so that was a hundred percent starch. And the reason why it was a hundred percent starch is because I was so super hungry and I wasn't, I'm not, I'm not trying to lose a bunch of weight. And, and I was like, I'm, I need to get food in now before I have a big, I make a mistake and start eating my kids snacks or something like that. So, but what I was going to tell you is that is, you know, when I'm super duper hungry, that's what food looks like to me is, is almost a hundred percent starch. If I'm not in an emergency situation, I can have the wherewithal to do something more like this, where it's like, here's a salad and here's some rice with some coconut aminos. That is more like a 50-50 plate. This is more like a weight loss 
plate than the other, okay? And that doesn't mean if you eat this sometimes when you have to, you know, you go 100% starch, that doesn't mean you won't lose weight that way. It just means that this help can help because you're diluting the overall calorie density of your meal. This can help accelerate or restart weight loss. So I do aspire personally to try to do more like uh, adding in more non-starchy vegetables and lowering my percentage of starches as often as I can, but sometimes I can't. So, so if you're going to use that strategy, don't like write a blood oath about it. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent to benefit you. Just do it as often as you can, where you're lowering maybe slightly your starch percentage and you're increasing your non-starchy vegetables and fruits. Well, that makes good sense yeah. for sure. Um, and, I, and I like the way that you're talking about don't make a blood oath because I think that's one of the things in our community that we hear one thing or we're like, oh, I saw this one study about and now I'm going to change everything I do. Yes. And, and not that I'm saying that the studies aren't important or learning information isn't important, but we live in a big world with a lot of studies that come in every day. And so sometimes, I, I maybe it's just me, but sometimes I have to stop the impulse to go, oh, that's the thing that's going to fix me, right? Right. And whereas, you know, I can keep going like this, and I bet in a little while longer I'll hear a second study that backs that up or doesn't. And then I can add that to what I'm doing instead of always jumping from one train track to the other, we could just change seats in the same car a little bit. Love it. Oh, that's so well said. Yes. Uh, thank you. I wasn't sure if that was going to turn out well or not. No way you could see like my face. You could see my face. And I was like, hmm, is this one going to work out? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> and Kathy, uh, who is in our program, um, was saying, what about melatonin going back to our sleep conversation? Because I know there's a lot of talk about magnesium as well, melatonin. I know I'm taking a little something with like chamomile and, and L-theanine. So any of those things would be interesting. Yes. I And Kathy, I believe you had a conversation with Dr. Lim about that. And I would always, or maybe you didn't. I don't I think know. It might be the other Kathy the, who's actually asking the question. Oh, I thought you said you were taking that. Oh, sorry. Okay, the other Kathy. But asked. You know, okay, I did Kathy. take it for a while, but I haven't taken it in a in a good bit now. Okay, yeah. Um, you will just have to talk to your doctor about that. Or if you want to know, like Dr. McDougall's opinion, you should come and ask at one of the um, Sunday evening sessions or send an email to Heather or something like that. Contact us that way and ask about that. Um, I think it would be great if there's enough demand, which I think you all can mobilize and contact the McDougall program about requesting Dr. McDougall do a sleep uh, series or lecture or something soon. Yeah, that would be okay. good. Yeah. Dr. McDougall does tend to have a little bit of a different stand, uh, slant on sleep. Um, his observation is that there are people who are oversleeping, sleeping too much, and that that can contribute to depression. And he didn't just get that out of thin air. There's a bunch of studies that show that oversleeping can contribute to depressive types of syndromes and things. Um, but I'll tell you my observation out here in the world is that most people are not getting enough sleep yeah. and that's the problem that I see and people talk to me about most frequently. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think, it, you know, with all the extra stressors and things like that, I think that it, it's been a chronic problem for a long time, but it seems like it gets, I don't know, this is my armchair view of the world. This has nothing to do with reality, but I, I see it in people I know more than I feel like I used to. Uh, Karen says she has issues during the night because of night sweats. I don't even wake up, but I'm still restless. So I don't know if there's anything. Yeah, I kind of, I get that. I get that completely. Sometimes you get that because the dog is actually late. Yeah. We have a, a 65 pound dog and the dog will be plastered yeah. to one of us so we can wake up in a sweat going oh like, why am i so hot why is it so hot 
And then I'll be like, oh, because I have a dog from here to here, extra blanket on me, right? Yeah. He's and I, just like got yeah. his arm over me. And I know a lot <laughs> of us in the community are pet lovers, so, um, you know, that could be, <laughs> but that's probably not your problem. That's probably just our problem. Do you know of anything? Yeah, I have a couple thoughts on this. So um, night sweats can range in seriousness from no problem at all whatsoever to a very serious medical issues. So most likely it's not this, you know, most likely it's either you're not sleeping with your air on the right temperature, you don't have the right heaviness of blankets, things like that. Hormonal changes during menopause and perimenopause can make a huge impact. Um, However, for any of you guys who haven't heard yet, PCRM, the Physicians Committee for Research and Medicine, uh, did a really great study on the impact of whole soybeans on hot flashes Ooh. and night sweats. And so go over to their website, it's pcrm.org. We aren't associated th with them professionally at all, but we love them and we love their mission. And so um, go to pcrm.org and maybe type in their search um, soy, soybeans or something, something like that, soybeans and hot flashes, if you want to go um, look at that. But like I said, night sweats can actually be indicative of some some more serious medical conditions so if you have any other symptoms that also you know onset right around the same time that you started getting night sweats or you have unexplained weight loss or um you're actually getting fevers and things like that in the middle of the night you you definitely want to consult with your doctor about that that that's all really great things. oh one other thing is that some people just sleep super heavily and they bundle up. This is me. I go to sleep all bundled up because I'm cold natured and I'm all bundly. I mean, literally my face is covered everything. And I wake up hot and sweaty because I'm sleeping so heavily, so deeply that I don't recognize when I'm starting to get too warm and just kick it off, you know, kick off all the blankets. And so it could just be as simple as that. Like you just need to sleep with fewer blankets. So. That's a great point because we always go for like the super complicated thing sometimes with skipping like what the easiest thing to do is. So thank right. you for that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Tia says oatmeal is mentioned as a good starch that helps bind to and flush cholesterol. Is there another starch that does the same action or is it specific to oats? I see it mentioned for breakfast a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, TS, great question. Hello. And um, I actually don't know the answer to that question. I do know that whole grains in general, like all the cooked whole grains are very positively associated with lots of good health benefits. But oatmeal oats are the thing that I've seen with the cholesterol specifically. Um, I have heard and seen that some people say that um, ground flax also has a similar effect, ground flax, if you add that to things. And it looks like there are several health benefits to adding just a tablespoon of ground flax to your oatmeal or your salad or something like that each day. It's not like a hard and fast recommendation of the McDougal program, but several of us do use ground flax um, about a tablespoon a day. Awesome. Um, yeah. Lori has a question for you, Stacy. Mm -hmm. Now that you have lost your weight, can you give an example of how much of those extras you can add back in like tofu or a sauce with nuts, et cetera, in a week? Oh gosh, it all depends. So for me, if I'm um, not going out to eat. I lost you, hold on. Oh. Talk again. Hello. Good, got you now. Okay, good. Whoops, I don't know where I went. Here I am. Um, <laughs> it all depends on what's going on in that week. So if I'm going out to eat um, once, maybe twice in that week, I don't add any extras in. There, there really isn't space for me to go out to eat and have extras. 
Um, but if I'm not going out to eat, which I do try to minimize as much as possible, or if, you know, I go somewhere, but I get like rice and steamed vegetables, that's still, you know, 100% low calorie density and McDougally, you know, but if I'm having a richer meal, I'm out to eat or something like that, then I don't add the extras in a normal week where I don't go out to eat, I can get away with like a little bit. It's like piece of toast here. Uh, tortilla there, um, PB2. I will tell you guys honestly, I have kept nuts for the most part out of my diet because I just, I personally am a person who, if I start going that direction, I can real easily have an issue with my consumption and have a really hard time scaling back. And when they're not in my diet, I don't have an issue with them at all. In fact, we have, you know, every kind of nut you could ever want or imagine in our freezer here. And I just am not, I don't have any problem with them. I, I'm not tempted by them, but you open the jar and I start eating them and then they become a problem. And usually if they become a problem, they're like a days long problem that I have to reel back in. So that's why I personally haven't added those back in. But it's a little bit to answer your question. It's just a little here and there, but it's I am totally Lori. If this helps, I am totally satisfied with my food. I don't feel like I'm missing anything. I don't feel deprived. If I go out to breakfast, you know, with friends or whatever, I have no problem getting, you know, um, veggie, you know, taco breakfast tacos with potatoes and have them on a tortilla. And I'm not worried about that. And I know it's not going to like wreck me or cause me to have three pounds to lose. So it's nice. It's like, I don't have to super worry about it, but I do have to pay attention and I can't add it all back in. Right. So I hope um, that helps. Oh, it totally, I think, yeah, that was great. <laughs> I didn't think it was all over the place. I thought you gave a lot oh, okay. of great information. Yeah. So Deborah, okay, um, and, and it's getting close to the top of the hour. Do you still have time for a few more questions? Yeah, a few more. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Deborah says, I go work out from eight to 11 every day. What would a good post-workout meal be? I'm starved when I get home. Of course you are. Did she say eight to 11? Eight to eleven. Wow, she's my did, hero. That's how many hours? Nine to three. Eleven. That's three hours every day. That that's amazing. I'm so wow. Impressed. That's yeah. Wow, Deborah. So you are probably very hungry. I think that in your case, probably about in the middle of your workout, you probably need to be um, taking in something. So you could make some of these like little energy ball things that have, I don't know what your weight loss goals are, but something with like, um, you know, oats and maybe some uh, nut butters or something like making some energy balls or finding a really nice clean um, bar, like a Lara bar or something like that. Now, everybody listen, everybody gather around and listen, please. <laughs> I do not recommend Alara bars for anybody who is trying to lose weight unless you're doing what Deborah is talking about, where you're working out for an extended period of time. Um, and in that case, the Lara bar is there just to get you through. It is, it's not helping with weight loss. It is not. It's, it's re replenishing energy. Another option is a banana, banana and an apple, banana and orange something in the middle of your workout because the risk that you run if you wait three hours and then you go home and you're starving is that your rational mind shuts down and your body is like sending the hail mary signals get calories in here right now and so you you probably struggle i would imagine deborah making good choices when you get home and you're that hungry so something in the middle of your workout is what i would recommend awesome so F S F S F O S. I never can say that right. S Foss. S Foss does not okay. have a hard uh, does not having a hard time the last ten to fifteen pounds mean that your goal weight should be lower than you thought. So if you're not struggling to lose those pounds. No, not at all. No. I mean, it could be, it could be that you, you know, goal weights are a weird thing because a lot of us our reasons are like 
ridiculous. Like, oh, well, that's what I weighed in my senior prom. And so that's what I want to weigh now. And it's like, well, that's nice and cute, but like, <laughs> do you really need to weigh that? You know, <laughs> like, is that a good reason just because you want to like try on your prom dress again or whatever it is? Um, can I add this in too? Because I found yes. one that supports this. Um, Karen says, I've wondered the same several times. I've also been upset with myself for not keeping going and losing weight when I hit my goal so easily. Oh, gosh, how nice. It's possible. I, I will tell you very frequently, I talk with people who set their goal weight way too high. And, and the reason is because they don't believe there's ever any possibility they could be lower than that. If your goal weight, so here's what we look at when it comes to a goal weight. You want it to be within, generally speaking, now there are certain body types that, that you would need a recommendation from your doctor. Like if you're a bodybuilder, okay, a professional bodybuilder, the BMI chart probably will not work for you. Okay. Or if you are a very, um, there are some, certain, um, ethnically speaking, there are folks, um, that have a larger build and the BMI chart may not be appropriate for them. Um, like a larger, uh, not larger bones. That's not what I'm like, a, like a thicker, larger framed person mm -hmm. who is very muscular your body weight may need to be much higher than someone your same height that has a smaller frame, smaller bones and frame. And there's nothing wrong with that. You, but if you think that might be you, you should have a conversation with your doctor about it. What do you think I should weigh? Um, but for most people, the BMI range is appropriate. Um, and so if you are within your healthy BMI range and you're very happy with your blood pressure, your pulse, your cholesterol, um, all of those types of things, those parameters, your blood glucose, then, and you're happy with how you feel and look in your clothes, then you're good. But if you are at the tippy top of your range and maybe some of those other numbers haven't come down to optimal, or you don't feel great, or you just not quite loving the way you feel in your clothes, then keep going. Um, but it's very subjective, you know, down there at the end, it's very subjective. I can tell you from my experience, I got down to my goal weight and I felt like, oh, I'm not done. I got down to what I thought was my goal weight and I, it was clear that I, no, I'm not quite there. And, um, so, so anyway, I wouldn't be married to any particular number. I would just start to really assess, okay, now that I'm here, how do I feel? Am I feeling great? Are my biometric numbers looking good? Am I in the healthy BMI range? And then determine, um, it, whether you keep going based on all of that information. Right. So we have a, a question from Annie. Mm -hmm. um, she would like to know what the price range of the McDougal program is and is the one in the bundle, in the, bundle in the, the vegan health bundle that's for sale right now is com it comparable comparable to the paid programs. I really want to finally learn how to help my body. Okay, so you can go on to drmcdougal.com, drmcdougal.com. Um, I cannot tell you exactly what the cost of our, our normal cost of mini courses is right at this moment, because I'm not hundred percent sure. I think it's usually around 300. It's somewhere in the, I think they can range in price from like 150 to 300. I think that's, I'm what sorry. I'm not as familiar. From with seeing okay. Yeah. And the 12 okay. day program is a different program. So I just want to, I yes. just wanted to set that aside. So What's in the bundle is not the 12 day program. No, very that's what I was just, yes, I was just about to say that. So our 12 day online program is our big deal, full comprehensive program that we have. And it is $2,995. Okay. So 3000 bucks. And, um, it includes medical visits with Dr. Anthony Lim, our medical director, three of those during the course of the program. You have a support specialist like me or Tiffany every day of the 12 day program, and then following you for a year to provide support throughout the year. Um, 
tons of lectures, tons of cooking demos, um, chats every morning with Dr. McDougall and Mary. Um, our, we have our exercise physiologist, Jack Dixon, who comes and does a couple of lectures. We've got Dr. Doug Lyle, our psychologist, who comes and does a few lectures. Dr. Lim does some behavioral health lectures during the course of the program. Heather does some cooking demos and meal prep. Jeff Novick, our registered dietitian, who is a legend in this realm um, of plant-based medicine, he does a few lectures and he also does a cooking demo during the program. Chef AJ sometimes comes on as a guest chef, um, and we've had a few others that kind of come through. So it is a big, big thing, okay, the 12-day program. Our mini courses are not even meant to be in line with the 12-day program in any way, shape, or form. They are a piece. They are a slice of the puzzle that is specific to a subject. So we have a weight loss mini course. We have an aging gracefully mini course. Um, we have one on Mary's mini. We have one on the gut health. The gut health one is the one in the bundle. Um, there's a few more. I'm kind of blanking on what the other ones are, but um, so anyway, so they're a, they're a, they're a piece of the pie, <laughs> but the whole pie is the McDougal 12 day online program. If you want to just go big or go home, really transform your health, you know, and and do so with the watchful eye of medical supervision from Dr. Anthony Lim, Dr. McDougal, and from your support specialist, that's the one you want to do if you're able to do it. And speaking from experience, uh, I highly recommend that. Like, there's some things that that could have gotten real scary if we didn't get me in there and, and mm -hmm. have some medical supervision. So it's, right. it's important when you're making big changes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I would even say with the bundle, too, though, go ahead. If you're, if you're new and you have the bundle, go ahead and make sure you're signing up for that gut health course and get into there. Also, you can watch... Dr. McDougall's YouTube channel, all the information about like what you can and can't eat for the starch solution is on drmcdougall.com. So there's a lot of places for you to start exploring. And we just have two quick questions and then story time, because I think these are super quick. Abby, Abigail says, must you have veggies with every meal? Nope. That's easy. <laughs> I, I knew that one's going to be fast. And I'm trying, oh. Anna wants to know how much fruit does Stacy eat? Oh, I I kind of love this because no one ever wants to know what I do. <laughs> I'm like, how much fruit do I eat? I eat either usually either blueberries or cherries or mangoes for breakfast. So maybe like a serving or two of those, and then. Um, Oftentimes I'll have an apple over the course of the day, either in a salad or just as a snack. And sometimes I'll have a banana. So I would say, oh, and then sometimes I'll have like a little frozen, a couple little pieces of frozen mango for dessert after dinner. Mm. I would say I probably eat between two and four total servings of fruit a day. Oh, that sounds great. Cause I think sometimes, and and I don't want to muddy the waters, but sometimes people get the different plans confused and if they can have fruit or not. So I think this is really helpful mm -hmm. to talk yeah. about eating fruit. Yeah. Eat fruit. You can definitely eat fruit. Now we do have people, we do, you may have heard that we sometimes do put limits on fruit and there are reasons for that. So one is that we have people come to the program who are eating 12 to 15 servings of fruit a day which for those of us that don't eat that much fruit, we're like, what, how? And then I have other people who are like, yep, I can see it, sounds good, I would do that, that checks out. You know, everybody's different. And the issue with fruit is that oftentimes when people are eating that many servings, it's because their treat, it's like a treat and it tastes so good and it's just very easy to eat fruit. Fruit is not starch though. And so you can end up accidentally over consuming fruit calories because they're just not as filling as starches. And that's why we tell people, hey, if you're trying to lose weight, it would probably be a good idea for you to limit your overall intake of fruit to like well, two a day, three a day. And you, you may have heard different guidelines too. And that's because there's not a hard and fast rule. It just depends on what your goals are, how, how well you're meeting those goals and just 
you know, it's again, it's not like a, a rule. It's a guideline. If you're having trouble losing weight as efficiently as you'd like to, maybe look at your, maybe your fruit intake could be a piece of that, or maybe not. You just got to experiment with it. And I, I like that too. And, and I think that's one of the things that you teach us so well is that it is different for everybody. And it is the human condition for me to want you to give me a checklist of what I'm supposed yes. to do that I can check mm -hmm. off. So right. anybody else who's sitting with both of those things, feeling happy that you have this leeway and unhappy about it at the same time, we are right there with you. <laughs> we are. We are so right there with you. So story time, is it time to oh, is gather it story around? Time? I think it's story time. Yes, okay, good. Well, um, so I told this story. We have, oh, one thing that we really love that we have is after you've gone through the 12 day program, we have a Wednesday gathering of alumni of the 12 day program every week. I'm there, I moderate it. I don't really do anything. I just make sure everybody is having a good time. <laughs> That's basically it. I'm more like the, um, the host, the, the like party host or something <laughs> anyway. Um, but it's really fun. We do it every Wednesday and we get together and talk about all kinds of things. Well, I told this story this past week and a couple of people kind of liked it. So I thought I would retell it here. So, um, here's the story. It's the, I'll, I'll go ahead and like spoiler alert. The moral of the story and the goal of the story is to help you understand how important it is to get the basics down pat to really focus on the simple basics without getting so into the nitty gritty details. Um, and I'll explain that in just a second. So my son, I have four boys. I think I've shared with you guys before. Well, my second son, it started to become apparent that he could like basically just teach himself any song on the piano. Just, he would listen to a song a couple of times and then he'd just go in there. And it wasn't like he was, he wasn't playing by ear in the traditional sense. It's not like he was just like, doo, 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 you know, but he would go in there and just work on it. And he was patient enough and would take the time to like pound out the song. And it didn't take him very much time. He could just could figure it out. And no one ever taught him music. No one ever taught him to read music or like which notes are which or anything. It's just, he would hear it. And then within a few, you know, maybe like an hour or two, he'd have like a pretty good, you know, pounding out of the song to a certain extent. And so it was like, oh my gosh, where is this coming from? I mean, my husband and I, neither of us play any musical instruments. And we were like, he's so gifted. This is amazing. And he was actually getting to be a pretty good piano player all on his own. He had never had a lesson or anything. And so um, someone suggested, hey, you, even though he like obviously knows how to teach himself, you really should put him in piano lessons so that he can learn the finer details and all this stuff and get some help, you know, and accelerate mm. through it. Um, and so we're like, okay, we'll do that. And we asked him, he said, sure, we'll do piano lessons. And he went to his first lesson. And at the end of the lesson, the teacher was talking to me and she said, listen, he is obviously like really naturally gifted at the piano. He's a beautiful piano player. He does, he really is very good. And we're like, yes, we know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> as if we had anything to do with it. And um, she's like, but he's going to struggle because he has never learned the basics and it's going to be very hard for him, but he has no choice. He's got to go back to square one and learn these basics. And it's going to frustrate him because he's so far beyond them. But unless he goes backwards and learns these basic principles about how to play the piano, the mechanics of where your hands need to be, where the notes are, where your feet need to be, how you need to sit. She's like, he can only, he will only be able to get so far without those basic foundational building blocks. And so she said, that's what I need to do with him. And it was very frustrating for him, but you know, she explained it to him. We explained it to him. We saw the frustration and the process and everything, but we knew that in order for him to not hit a wall in the near future, we had to go backwards and start again. And so that's what we did. And 
I have, since that happened, I have so equated that in my mind with this journey. What happens is there are so many voices out there. I mean, the internet is a wonderful time. Like it's a wonderful time to be alive, to have access to the internet. You have access to so much information all the time. But the other side of that coin is that we have access to too much information and some some misinformation, right? And it's very hard to discern, okay, first of all, what is actually true? And second of all, what is actually important? What is foundational and what's just noise, you know? Mm -hmm. And so now that there are so many different voices on YouTube, you know, on Facebook, all these things, people get confused. They come to us so confused all the time. Like, am I supposed to be eating black cumin every day? What about turmeric? What about yep. six <laughs> servings of greens? And do I need vegetables for breakfast? And are potatoes fattening? And it's just like <laughs> so much, you know? And so we tell them when they come to us, hey, listen, you are in Freedomville now, okay? Freedomville looks like this. We are going to give you a couple of key foundational guidelines that you are to follow. And then from there, all the rest of it is just noise. That doesn't mean it's inaccurate or it's wrong in any way. It just means that it's not important yet. OK, because what's the most important is that you get the foundational, basic things down and that you practice them over and over and over again until they become a habit. So many of you guys who are listening today may have found yourself unfortunately and unintentionally deep in the weeds. OK, you're asking yourself some of those questions I just mentioned about black cumin and, you know, whatever other thing and supplements and all this stuff. I want you to scope way back. OK, way back. And, and this is what you want to focus your attention on. You want to for optimal health and to, to run a clean experiment to see what your body can do with this McDougal way of eating. Your goal is to not eat animal products, not eat oil, to eat when you're hungry and stop when you're comfortably full and eat a starch centered diet with the addition of fruits and vegetables for taste and variety. That's it. Okay. Nothing added, nothing taken from that. You don't need to do anything else. Just start with that. And some of y'all are thinking, well, oh, wait, I've been doing this for 15 years. Like, I already got that. Do you really? Do you? We all should re-examine that question. Do I have the foundation set right? Because if not, there's never a bad time to go back and start again. Because then whatever you build from there is built on the right foundation and you're moving in the correct direction instead of over here somewhere. Oh, I think that's story really time cool. complete. Yay! We love story time, Stacy. It is. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And uh, Diana is saying that um, she, she was happy. Oh, went, went to the, to the wrong place. place. Sorry. Sorry, I'm coming back. I'm coming, coming back. back. There we go. <sighs> it's because so I. She has a, have a bunch of scenes and somehow it moved. So I clicked on what I thought was you and it just went to a blank screen. <laughs> so wasn't that helpful? Now we're all here together. 30 lives in, the, in 10 days is a uh, little, little bit exciting. But Diana was mentioning <laughs> the fact that um, she was happy to have found the starch solution and has dropped 33 pounds since August of 23. Which is really awesome. That is awesome. And uh, TS says, it seems like it would be harder to lose weight without specific checkpoints like Weight Watchers. Seems way too simple, but at the same time, way too hard. And I think, you know, it, it seems like for me, or at least the way my brain works, like when you're making this whole new eating plan of whatever way, if you're checking things off a list, but I think if you write down what Stacy said just a minute ago, or just like seriously, it's it's just much more simple than we're all trying to make it and when i was talking earlier about turning the ship around and 
and going back, like when I, when I feel like I've gotten too loosey goosey, that's exactly what I do is I go back to those basic instructions and I will go back to brown rice and vegetables and every time it writes my ship. Yeah. And, and sometimes, too, what can be unwriting you can be that you're overwhelmed or do, working too much. I'm a prime, or overthinking. I'll, I'll be your prime example for the day. And that that's those, when I know, like, bundle week is coming up, like, we have the fridge full of food so that, you know, I can go and eat and get what I need to do. So it is yep. Cheryl's birthday, too, so there are going to be some, gonna there are be. a couple of planned outings mm -hmm. as well. Thursday night we're going to just two though really yeah Fiction Kitchen which if you guys are ever in the Triangle area it's in Raleigh North Carolina and it's delightful yes so Stacy when you come to visit we will take you there I am on a plane on Wednesday I'll be there for the Thursday <laughs> gathering <laughs> Caroline Morrison makes everything there herself and mm. um, she has. You can eat as incredibly healthy or as incredibly junky as you want there. Um, but you always have but you options. Always have options. She gets. And she's very flexible. She's just an awesome, yeah. awesome food. Her human soups being. are so good. Oh my God, her soups. She has never put a soup in front of me that I have not just been like blown away by. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's just amazing. And she mm -hmm. makes um, a plant based barbecue that tastes me just like even texture and everything just like eastern north carolina barbecue which is a thing wow and for any of you guys who are like that's great but i'm not grown up enough yet to go out to eat which had like we were for a while yep. you can get a compliant barbecue sauce make sure that you look out for a couple things obviously you'll look at your numbers and things the nutritionals but you just want to make sure there's not worcestershire sauce with anchovies in it that's the one vegan caveat it's it's becoming a little easier, but just check. As soon as I start assuming and I look, it's there. And then go ahead and either use your food processor shredding blade, or you can you can be a grown up that I'm not and shred on a box grater. Carrots or sweet potatoes. Throw those two things in a slow cooker, and you've got magical barbecue. And it's good stuff. And and it's yeah. And you can make a barbecue sauce. Like I have a date barbecue sauce I make sometimes. But it's all, what I love about the McDougal program is it's okay to get some compliant sauces. So that's a really good, easy, I don't have the energy to cook today, or I know today is going to be a bad day at work. Throw that in your I, a little slow cooker or throw it in a big one and you can freeze it. Yep. Great idea. Mm, yeah. I'm hungry. <laughs> I think it's about time for yeah. for birthday breakfast, yep. birthday lunch. Yay! Winter. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much, Stacy. I really appreciate you coming on. I know you're coming on later, near the end of the month too, so everyone will be super excited. And I don't. I love story time. Like it's my favorite now. Oh, good. Good. Well, my pleasure. I mean, thank you so much for having me. And I feel so honored to have shared Cheryl's birthday with her. Thank so you. thank you, Cheryl, it. and happy birthday once again. Thank so you. glad that you're alive. And I'm so honored and thankful to know you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it, Stacey. Yeah. And everyone who has wished me a happy birthday today. Yeah, there's been lots of really great um great reminders and i'm really glad that cheryl's getting to kind of bask in some of this because yeah. it's it's a good birthday it is it's a been birthday. a it's been a good year it's been a real good year well stacy thank you so much and everybody if you have some more questions kind of you can put them in the comments and stacy might come back and answer them if she has time or I'm going to be listing when she's coming on. I think it's in the 20s of March. Yes, that, that's right. So, so yep. I'll get that up there and you guys can ask some more questions live. But other than that, have the very best Cheryl's birthday that you can have. So the better your day <laughs> is, that's a present to Cheryl. That's think exactly of it that right. way. All right, oh. you guys have an amazing day and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay, bye. bye.